Lesson 5, Movement. Part one, how do I make a person move? Now that we've seen examples of movement, let's pick a person to replicate. How about her? This is the Pallet Town Sign Girl, and she's gonna be our example of a movement script. Notice that she moves out of our way after we talk to her, and she makes some room for us to look at that sign. Isn't that nice of her? Not really, she was just programmed to do that. Let's move right along into the portion where we need Notepad. So, let's open it up. We'll write the script the same way that we have been. Lock, fakes, player, etc. Add a little message. And then we come to a new command called Apply Movement. It's all one word, of course, because it is a command. And it's followed by OXOO. This OXOO represents the person that will be receiving the movement. The way we determine the person's number is by going into advanced map. I've selected the girl, the person I want. Over on the right, in the box entitled people number, you'll notice a 1. So we're going to put that into our script, OXO1. But to the best of my experience, using OX usually throws off the number. So delete the OXO and just put 1. After that, we put offset move. On the next line, offset move 1. And then be careful right here, semicolon, not equals. And then binary, binary. So let's take a look at this really quick. A semicolon is used when representing values pertaining to movement rather than example a text a message one of those where you normally use equals after the semicolon you write binary and then binary that's used to tell the script basically that you are about to input the value now about this inputting values of movement how do we know what to put well we have a text document called movement for fire red there's a separate one for Ruby and Sapphire. It's all the movement values contained in the game, for the most part. Now, we want our person to walk in the selected direction. So we're going to look in the section under walk. We'll have our person take one step to the left. If you notice, left is OX12. So, we'll go back to our script, and after the binary, write OX12. Simple, right? If you wanted to move multiple spaces, you could write OX12, 12, 12, 12, etc. Continue. But when we're all done with our moving direction, we have to end it with OXFE. This basically tells the script that that's it for the movement values, and it'll just continue on from there. If you don't put OXFE, the script will continue to look for movement values, and you will probably crash which is never a good thing. After that, we're gonna put pause move OX O O O O O. That will tell the game to wait until all the movement is done. If you don't put pause, the players will move and the script will continue and it won't wait for them to finish. Part two, how do I make the player move? Let's say we wanted to make a script where the player follows another character around. How would we do that? Well, we would give one person, the person that we want the player to follow, a set of movement values. For example, take one step left. Then we would give the player that exact same set of movement values. All you have to do is 
use apply movement OXFF. Very simple. OXFF just tells the game that the player is moving. When we're all finished, we'll have our results. I've got the guy staring at the sign. When we talk to him, he tells us, look at this. And then he takes one step left, and we take one step left. Heard that if you talk to the guy from the left side, now he will follow the player. When used correctly, this could be very useful. Thanks to this tutorial, you should now know how to make a person move, and how to make the player move. Also, how to make the player follow another person. If you fail to understand any of these concepts, you might want to try rewatching this tutorial.